So we've got quite a lot of the EDSAC machine connected um, and working at the individual subsystem level. We're very much still in the middle of commissioning, getting those subsystems to talk to each other. So for example, in the front row, the clock and digit pulse system, we've worked on in improving that. It now has to drive a lot more circuits elsewhere in the machine. At the very back of the computer, the arithmetic unit has been commissioned, and we know that that can carry out arithmetic functions for us. Most of the work remains in the, the middle of the machine, which is called main control. That's where instructions are fetched from the memory, decoded, and then the arithmetic unit is invited to do the required function. When the arithmetic unit's produced a result and put it in something called the accumulator, it sends a signal back to main control, which goes on to run the next instruction. On a good day when things are working well, main control can execute sequences of simple instructions. We've seen that working quite often. Um, we're still having to refine some of the circuits. A big campaign has been to deal with what are called flip-flops. These are circuits that hold a one or a zero depending on the state of a, a computation. In the original EDSAC, they were initially made using something called monostables, which is a circuit that can be set and holds a one or zero for a period of time, but then potentially drifts off into some intermediate state. Later, we know the EDSAC team used bistables, which are circuits that stay in a one or a zero until explicitly switched. We thought they didn't use bistables till much later in the life of the machine, but it appears they did use them earlier, and they had to do that to make the machine work reliably, and we've been following down the same path. To make life simple for ourselves, we've not yet connected the um, delay line store based on nickel delay lines. We've been using a small silicon um, simulator for a delay line, which are actually um, kept in the back of each of the chassis of ones that do the recirculation. This means we know we've got a reliable store so that the engineers working on main control can be focused on that logic of instruction fetch and decode. In parallel, the team working on the store have been checking that store addressing works perfectly, which it does. We know if main control asks to read location five, then data is fetched from location five and so forth. And we've been running a lot of testing on the long and the short delay lines to see how well they work in terms of reliability, particularly when they're in the environment of the machine where they're going to be subject to a lot of electrical noise. The short delay lines are working well. The long delay lines um, are working reasonably well. We would like them to be a bit more robust. And so there's still some work going on on improving the design and, and their performance. When main control is working and we're starting to execute more complex programs, then at that point we'll take out the delay line simulators and connect in the, the proper nickel delay lines. In fact, by accident that happened when we were working on the machine a couple of weeks ago and it turned out both memories were working and that certainly confused the engineers when they were getting twice as much data as they expected. Now you're also thinking about how uh, when the machine is working uh, but is subject to failure, how you might detect where the failures are? Yes, a big part of today's meeting of the engineers was taken up with how will we deal with failures when it's in operation. Today, obviously, when we're commissioning, all the people involved are experts and know the, the details of the machine. In the museum environment, it's going to be operated by guides and demonstrators who obviously will have basic training in how to turn the machine on and read in programs. Um, but then if there's a failure, um, what do they do? Well, they could summon the team, but that may, that may take a few days um, if people are away. So we've been talking about how we might use modern computers as watchdogs to check that certain things are operating correctly, like the clock and digit system, the instruction fetch and, and decode system, and whether we can build up higher levels of monitoring so that by feeding different test programs in the machine, we're capable of pinning down where a fault might be to one or two chassis. Um, and then we can ask the experts for that, those particular chassis 
to come in and look at the electronics. It may even be that we can um, have less expert people check for things that for valves that have um, fused and gone cold and make simple repairs, look for connections on the tag strips on the back of the machine that might have been knocked off.